origami. So you've probably seen a paper crane, maybe even folded one. Um, that's traditional origami. One square sheet of paper, no cuts. But these rules are really kind of modern. Uh, a lot of traditional models do use cuts. They do use multiple sheets of paper. And so I'd like to think of these as more of a choice you make when you choose your medium as an artist. What do you use? If you, if you use folding, then folding is what you want to do. If you, if you have to cut, well, maybe if you really need to, fine. But it's, it's more of a, of a, of a choice, uh, not, a, not a rule. Having said that, um, there's a lot more than a crane in modern origami. This is a mythological eastern dragon that not only has an incredibly intricate head, but more, more than a thousand scales on its body. It's folded from a single square sheet of paper, no cutting. Here's a model that shows a giant squid attacking a three-masted ship. Uh, the squid and the ship are both folded from the same square sheet of paper, no cutting. The sea, that, that, that patch of water, that's a separate sheet. So sometimes you need two sheets to show what you really want to show. And here's um, the last example of um, what I want to call modern origami. Um, Eric Joiselle's uh, three warriors, each figure folded from an individual sheet of paper. So all of their uh, features, including their armor, clothing, uh, their weapons made from a single sheet, three sheets, one for each of the warriors. Sadly, Eric Joiselle passed away just about a month ago. So with, the, with these limited means, one single square of paper, what is possible? Having seen that, you'd say, well, probably everything's possible. And that can be proven mathematically. Now, mathematicians will write this theorem down in a, in a different form, but what it says essentially is anything. Every shape can be folded. Um, however, often as mathematical theorems go, it doesn't really tell you how to do it. So uh, <laughs> what you want, what you want is a design technique. What you want is a system that will allow you to fold what you want. And there are several of those, and they're incredibly um, well-developed. Uh, box pleating started back in the 60s, and as its name might indicate, it allows you to fold boxes, three-dimensional shapes. So here's a train, uh, a locomotive and two cars folded from a single rectangle. Uh, if it was a longer rectangle, you could fold as many cars as you wanted. It wouldn't get any, much more, com any more complicated, really, except that it would take more time. Um, Tree design is something that's a little harder to explain, but it's easy enough to be explained to a computer. Um, it would take a little longer to, to go through the details, but in principle, it's like saying, here's a stick figure. Uh, now, computer, go away and calculate how I fold this stick figure. So you can uh, design a human being by, by saying, well, here's uh, what I need, uh, my legs to be long, how long. Uh, a trunk, the two arms, and the head, and the computer will do its calculations and tell you where to put folds on a sheet of paper so that when you fold it up, you get a stick figure. Still, you have to go from the stick figure to an actual uh, figure resembling something, so there's a lot more involved than, than just the computer part, but it can be programmed and has been. Um, another design technique is to uh, develop flat patterns, and it, it's usually called tessellations because mathematicians call uh, patterns that can be repeated infinitely over a plane, tessellations. This dates back to the 60s as well. Here's Ron Resch, an engineer who developed some, some very interesting tessellations. The one he shows, in fact, if I had a sheet of paper folded that way, I could, I could stand on it. It would not collapse under my own weight. It works as a corrugation also. Uh, but I'll show you some more tessellations later. And then finally, there's a very strange technique called crumpling, which is what, it, what the word means. You take a sheet of paper, you crumple it up, you open it up, you crumple it up again, and then you go through a lot of uh, these phases, but if you do them correctly, you can design things using it. So here's a tree designed using crumpling. It started out as a square sheet of paper. There are no cuts or tears made in that sheet. So I could take it and unfold it. Um, but having seen all that, you, you could say, well, what, what, what else is there to do? These people have done everything. So one way to, to approach it is to say, well, maybe if I limited my means even more and, and use just a very simple type of fold, maybe just the simplest things possible, maybe just pleats. So what can you do with pleats? Uh, that's not how I started thinking about it. I started thinking about it because I saw a photograph of something in a book. And it was described 
by a caption that says basically make a pleat, make a pleat, make a pleat, make a pleat, and so on. And then the paper curves under its, under its own tension. So I tried that. And um, interestingly enough, I got something completely different. <laughs> and, and so I set it aside. I thought, well, he had the right paper. I didn't have, have the right paper. So that's, that's all there is to it. But I'd come back to it every, every uh, once in a while. And after about 10 years, I realized that there were two folds missing from this. And really, I had the thing there all along. It's just that I'd forgotten or didn't know that I was supposed to make make two extra folds that would lock the paper. So this is the same thing, um, except having been locked, it learned what shape I wanted it to be in, so it won't go back. Um, so here's the one I got following the instructions, and here's the, the actual thing that was there in the book. Once you know how to make one, you can make multiple copies of the same sheet from, uh, of, of the, from the same sheet of paper. So repetition, although you're folding them all simultaneously, so it's not really repetition. Uh, you can rearrange them. If you arrange them correctly, the, there are no more curves, only straight lines, even though you fold straight lines all along. So you can rearrange them in multiple ways. And then you can get things that are not quite as symmetric anymore. So this one curves in different directions. But being a mathematician, I say, well, this is really flat folds I'm making. So this should be flat when it's done. And I'm telling you, you're really all suffering from poor vision and the trick of the light, because this is a square. It's flat, except it wants to curve. So. so you can do more than this. Uh, you can combine two waves on the same sheet. You get a double wave. Um, or you can make something else. And here's a detail. And just to give you an idea of the scale, here's the real thing. Now, if you start with a slightly different basic fold, the, the, the basic folds for this were all pleats, simple pleats. If you start with a slightly more complicated pleat, this is what you get. And it may remind you of the basic shape. But when you turn it over, it's much more interesting. And then you can use this modified basic shape to create special effects, such as a weave pattern. This is not actually woven. This is a square sheet of paper folded up. And if you zoom in, you can see that the weaves are really suggested by, by again, by an, an inability to see correctly and to see all the details. Um, they behave like weaves, but they're not really woven. Um, or you can um, create patterns within patterns. So this is a single sheet of paper, square, complete with walls. Or you can go on and try to uh, pull out some of the pleats and create shapes that indicate uh, or, or illustrate other things. So there's a very simple basic thing you do. You just have to repeat it sufficiently many times. It becomes interesting. Um, well, if you repeat it in correct order. And then uh, these pleats create tension in the sheet. Uh, the nicest thing about it is the accuracy is not really crucial. You can, you can make mistakes and still things come out looking correctly. And um, actually, the best of all is you don't have to unfold anything. A lot of origami books will tell you, make all these steps, and then unfold back to square one, then refold in a different way, then unfold again, and then refold. Well, you don't have to do any unfolding here, and so you don't have to use paper. You can use metal to fold instead. Thank you.